Hello, it's Sol with a Shadowlands guide or a preview of what we know about Anima, the not so mysterious but easily misunderstood currency that we'll be grinding for in this expansion. Or are we? Before we get into what grinding Anima is all about, let's touch on what it is not, based on the current beta. And remember, beta. Anyone watching this is probably familiar with artifact power, the thing that powered up artifact weapons and the Heart of Azeroth. It was tied to unlocking traits, and it increased our stats, and we can farm it forever, and it was delicious, and it was joined at the hip to player power. Anima, on the other hand, is not artifact power. In fact, if all you care about is jumping into raids and Mythic Plus and PvP stuff, there is very little of this Anima grind that you have to worry about. The days of farming islands are behind you. The days of farming Soul Ash are in front of you, but that's a different video. Anima is a currency that feeds almost exclusively into casual content, if I were to use a gross oversimplification. But by casual content, I mean namely your Covenant Sanctum and upgrades. In a way, Anima is central to what I'm going to call a casual player's endgame, where at the end, you are a renowned member of your Covenant, showered with lavish gifts and perks and mounts and transmog and, at least to a very limited extent, player power. Think of Mechagon, with Pascal's expanding abilities to make weird stuff. Think of Najatar, with the bodyguards. I guess I should say, think of patch 8.2, but minus the Azerite essences. You're not going to find something like that here. The impression that I have is that Blizzard did a really thoughtful job of making sure that when they tied content together, they did it in such a way that the overlap between high-level endgame and the casual content is very minimal, but neither type of endgame is ignored. There's going to be a lot of anima to farm for your Covenant, but the Covenant is mostly a side activity. Alright, so let's get into it. How do you earn this stuff? You obtain Anima as soon as you can access World Quest content, which is shortly after joining a Covenant at max level, or upon entering the Shadowlands on an alt after your first level up experience. So that's right, you can start working towards your Covenant prestige on your alts right from the start. As I mentioned, a big chunk of Anima comes from World Quest content. It's simple, you see it on the map, you fulfill the requirements, and ta-da, it's yours. The goodie bags from Covenant Callings also drop anima, among other things. The mission table will also be a healthy, semi-passive source of anima. You could even call it a mobile source. <laughs> oh yeah. So what is anima spent on? A lot of it is spent on upgrading your Covenant Sanctum via an NPC conveniently labeled as Sanctum Upgrades. From here, we access a UI that allows the upgrade of what are essentially four different buffs that are the same for each Covenant. On the far left is a buff to your ability to travel within your Covenant zone. That means teleport points that only you have access to as a member of your Covenant, while the rabble have to use a flight point or travel on foot. Upgrading this will access more of these travel points. The second set of upgrades are for your Anima Conductor, which is a fancy way of saying that it unlocks more stuff to do in your zone. This needs more explaining, so let's go over to the Anima Conductor, which is this, I don't know, sword statue looking doohickey, and see what it does. On this map here, we can select an activity for the Anima Conductor to unlock for one day, and you can only activate one activity per day, but you'll notice that this too will cost Anima. Each time you activate something, you fill up this bar at the bottom, all the way to a count of 10. Once it's filled, you can reinforce one of these activities to be unlocked not just for the day, but permanently. So this can get pretty expensive and time-consuming to fully reinforce. With 6 activities, you need to channel anima 60 times for a total of 30,000 anima over 60 days. On the other hand, it's not like you're forced to unlock and reinforce everything either, but you can look at the Conductor as a late game dump for your Anima. When you first unlock the Conductor, you have a choice between two activities to open up. Each level opens up two more for the total of six. The third upgrade has to do with your mission table, from accessing it to increasing the efficiency of your missions by increasing your followers' recovery speed and the speed of running missions themselves. It's pretty straightforward. The final upgrade on the bottom is the extra activity that's unique to your Covenant. For the Kyrian, you can send your Soulbinds off to gladiator fights. For the Necrolords, building your own abominations. 
For the Night Fae, it's reviving spirits for gifts in return. And for the Venthyr, it's tea parties for the damned. When it comes to powering up the Sanctum, so far there isn't a big sense of urgency or need to be efficient, so I would just say power this up however you like. But personally, I plan on ignoring the travel and the mission upgrades, and I'm going to put my anima into the Conductor, in the hopes that an early investment will result in my unlocking more sources of anima faster, and unlocking my Covenant activity lets me start working towards the rewards there. Anima is also spent on vendors for snazzy looking gear and cosmetics, which obviously have an anima cost. For example, this armor vendor for the Kyrian sells stuff at what looks to be a cheap price, but darn, there are sub-requirements that have to do with their covenant activity, the Path of Ascension, the whole gladiator thing. Progressing through it will require work and upgrades, which requires, yeah, anima. Also consider that the item level of this gear, which is supposed to be far into your covenant progression, is, well, pitiful. At least when it's compared to gear that you can get anywhere else, including world quests and dungeons. What we're driving home here is that Anima is not a path to be a top parser or a mythic raider. It's a certain path to prestige out in the world, buffs and perks and cosmetics that require a good bit of work and farming. Again, there is some overlap no matter how you play the game. Some Anima farming per week helps keep a character's renown at its peak level. If that happens to be it, I really hope it stays true to its current form. Not to inject fear, but more like a scary but plausible reality, there is a chance that Anima could be involved in upgrading conduits, which are boosts for our character soulbinds in Shadowlands. Right now at this stage of the beta, we don't quite know, but this can change at any time. But if so, and Anima is used for this purpose, this would be more than just a step in the wrong direction. This would be an awkward dive into making Anima farming feel required for everybody, and it'll threaten to spoil the entire design. I know we're ending that on a not-so-happy note, but that is going to be it for what we know about Anima. And I hope that it helped to clear most of the air and dispel some of your previous trauma. Please leave some thoughts in the comments, like the video if you enjoyed yourself, and don't forget to subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. We'll see you later. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.